Suppose that we have another example where we let X be the flight time in minutes of an airplane traveling from Chicago to New York and the sample space of X is between 120 and 140 minutes. This means the flight may arrive any time between 120 and 140 minutes. The flight time is equally likely to be any time within that interval and the flight time cannot be any time outside that range. Therefore, if we let X be the flight time in minutes of an airplane traveling from Chicago to New York, then the probability density function f of x is defined as 1 over b minus a for x values between a and b and 0 elsewhere. This will be 1 over 140 minus 120, which is equal to 1 over 20 for x values between 120 and 140 and 0 elsewhere. A graph of the probability density function versus the x values would look as such. It would be a rectangle whose length goes from 120 to 140 and whose height is at a value of 1 over 20. Now calculate the probability that the flight time will be between 120 and 130 minutes. So our graph will simply be the probability density function versus the x values and in this case, the area of interest is the region shaded between 120 and 130. Since the area covered under the probability density function is equivalent to a rectangle, then we can calculate this area simply by taking the length and multiplying it by the height. The height is going to be equivalent to the value of the probability density function and in this case, it's 1 over 20 or simply 0 0.05. Now, the length is the change in the x values, and this will be 130 minus 120, which gives us a value of 10. So the probability that we're interested in will be the probability that x is between 120 and 130 minutes, not included, which is equal to the probability of x between 120 and 130 minutes with both included. So keeping in mind that for any continuous probability distribution, there are an infinite number of values in an interval, then the probability of any single value occurring is equal to zero. So that's why these two probabilities are exactly the same. This will be now equal to change in x multiplied by f of x and it will be 10 times 1 over 20 and this gives us a value of 0 0.05. Now calculate the probability that the flight time will be between 125 and 150 minutes. This can be indicated on the graph as the shaded area between 125 and 140. Please take note that the part of the range that has not been included in the interval has a probability of zero. Therefore, the probability of x between 125 and 150 is equal to the probability of x between 125 and 140 plus the probability of x between 140 and 150. This is the change in x multiplied by f of x for the first probability plus the change in x multiplied by f of x for the second probability. This is equivalent to 15 times 1 over 20 for the first probability plus 10 times 0 for the second probability. And the sum of the two products is equal to 0 0.75. Calculate the 75th percentile. As illustrated on this graph, the 75th percentile is the value of x that is missing, for which the area to the left of x is 0 0.75, 0 0.75 or 
Therefore, the area that is shaded is equivalent to the probability that x is between 120 and p75, and this is equal to 0 0.75. The shaded area under the probability density curve is a rectangle, so we're going to make use of the formula for the area of a rectangle to solve for p75. So this is going to be the change in x multiplied by the height, and this will give us 0 0.75. So the change in x is p75 minus 120 multiplied by the height, which is 1 over 20, and this is equal to 0 0.75. Therefore, solving for p75, we find that the final answer is 135 minutes. In the variance of a random variable from the uniform continuous distribution can be calculated using the following formulas. The expected value, which is the mean, is equivalent to A plus B over 2, and the variance, sigma squared, is equivalent to B minus A squared divided by 12. In the example, that considers the flight time from Chicago to New York, the probability density function was found to be 1 over 20 for x values between 120 and 140 minutes and 0 elsewhere. The mean is obtained by taking 120 plus 140, dividing it by 2, and this gives us 130 minutes. Therefore, on average, the flight time from Chicago to New York is 130 minutes. The variance is calculated as 140 minus 120 squared divided by 12, and this gives 33.3 recurring. And the standard deviation is simply the square root of 33.3, which gives an answer of 5.77 minutes. Therefore, the average distance between the mean and the data points in this population is 5.77 minutes.